Our problem statement opens with a four-story steel special moment resisting frame, an SMRF structure. We have deflections given uh, as shown below, and these have been determined according to ASC 716 section 12.8 using a static elastic analysis. So we did a ELF analysis to get these values below. We have some additional information that you can see there, risk category, seismic design category, importance factor, C sub D, which is dependent upon your vertical lateral system. Ours are those moment frames, as we said, and a row of 1.3. Uh, we got two things we're solving here today. Determine the design seismic deflections. Number two, compare the design story drifts with allowable story drifts permitted under the ASC E7 limitations. So we're gonna dip our toes into a little bit of everything today uh, drift related. So I think this is going to be a really good one. And of course we have our figure. We have a 16 foot tall first floor and then every floor above that is 12 feet tall. And we've been given our seismic elastic deflections, as you can see there in red. And right before we begin, you might be saying, what's the difference between seismic design deflection and seismic, uh, elastic deflection? Well, elastic deflection is displacement of a structure under normally a smaller, more reoccurring lateral event. Oftentimes, if you're in a high seismic region, this event would more so likely be either a tiny earthquake or a smaller earthquake or a, a larger wind event that should be occurring uh, periodically throughout the lifespan of the structure. And what this will do is displace or move our structure uh, some amount but it will remain within the elastic range of the building structure. So the material makeup of the building will never yield. It will stay in its elastic range. When we say elastic, think about a rubber band or an elastic band, some people call them. Uh, it will stretch and then it will go back. So for our concepts for a building, that building will move some amount, not very much, and then it will come back to rest in the same position that it started in. Uh, so no permanent deformations will take place. The structure maybe will have very, very minor cosmetic damage, you know, some cracks and some things, hairline, uh, but mo most likely the structure would be designed to not uh, undergo any type of damage under these type of elastic displacements. For structural engineers, design deflections or displacements are amplified through code provisions uh, based on the type of structure that you have and more specifically the type of lateral system that your building is made up out of. We're gonna be going through that today so you'll see that. And what this is is uh, the, the amount of displacement that a structural engineer will design the building for. So it's the amount of displacement or movement that the building is likely to see under a design level lateral event, most likely an earthquake in a high seismic region or you know, some type of hurricane or, or massive wind event in a non seismic region. And what this means is the building is expected to shake and move so much that it, uh, it moves beyond the elastic range of the structure's limitations, which means that permanent deformation does happen and uh, you'll get yielding within the structure if it's a ductile system uh, and damage will occur as the building moves or shakes beyond its elastic range and the building will not come back to its original position. It will be permanently displaced some amount because it shook so much and moved so far. So for us here today, we have our design seismic deflections denoted as just sub X. Uh, I'm gonna call it Lambda. I'm going to call it Lambda. It's probably not Lambda. I'm going to call it Lambda sub X. Well, we have been given elastic deflections. So first off, for part one, we need to switch them into design deflections. Well, how do we do that? Let's jump over to the ASCE 716. You'll find yourself in section 12.8.6, if I can draw here. And a figure that's actually very useful over time is this one right here, as well as the literature below it. You should be able to decipher all of this once we're done with today's video. But we're gonna move to the next page and that's gonna land us here. So the deflection at level X, there's our symbol, our lambda sub X, used to compute design story drift, drift 
uh, is delta shall be determined in accordance with the following equations. All right. So here's our equation. We have everything. We have our elastic displacement. Displacement and deflection can be used interchangeably. So throughout my video, if I go back and forth, apologies on that, but they're the same thing. C sub D is provided to us. That is dependent upon the vertical lateral system that you have. We have moment frames here today. You would normally go to the beginning of chapter 12, look up the type of vertical lateral system that you have and grab the appropriate C sub D. It was already provided to us, five and a half. And then your importance factor for seismic. Let's head back. Let's plug everything into this equation. Hey, pause the video here if you want to digest this for a second. All I've done is bring over the equation from the ASC E7. And then I've given us in a star here, a little example of displacement up at the fourth floor. So we are all the way up top, the very tippity top. And we've just plugged everything in. And you can see just how different elastic displacement is versus uh, design displacement. It's significantly larger and it can become even more large if your importance factor is greater than 1.0. Uh, in green here, all I've done is just done this same equation down here for the fourth story and done it for the stories below. Story drift, delta. Uh, I'll call it delta sub x because the x will be replaced with the story that you are examining. So you'll see that here in a moment. And then allowable drift is delta sub a. And you'll see that in the ASCE 7 when we jump over. So let's go blue here. So delta sub x uses uh, the, the design displacement. And story drift is actually the relative displacement between stories, okay? So you're just examining one story at a time. So that means uh, this would be delta four because it would be the total story drift of just the fourth floor. So how much this floor displaces between the bottom, between its floor and its roof. Delta sub four equals lambda x four minus lambda x three. Not to be confused with, do not do lambda xe4 minus lambda xe3. You need to convert them into design displacements, not keep them in elastic. Story drift is always design, okay? That's going to equal 11.44 inches minus 8.91 inches, which spits out 2.53 inches. So that's, if we drop this here and here, that's this total displacement at that story, okay? 2.53 inches. Let's plug in the rest of them. All right, excellent. Now we just need to compare these story drifts with allowable drifts and make sure we are code compliant. So we're gonna head over to the ASCE 7. See you there in a second. We're in 1212. Something to get uh, kind of repetitive with is starting at the beginning of the code section that you belong in and just skimming down from there uh, because all of these sections within material codes and, and all of these engineering codes are set up to kind of lead you down this trail of breadcrumbs that almost always start at the beginning of the section or the chapter that you're in. Um, and so why I'm telling you to do this is because right here in 12.12.1.1, there are additional things that you need to do when your vertical lateral system is comprised of moment frames. As you can see here, well, I should say moment frames within high seismic design categories. So D through F, we are seismic design category D. So this does apply to us and we're moment frames. So this is us hundred percent, baby. Uh, for seismic force resisting systems, solely comprised of moment frames in structures assigned to SDC, D, E, F, the design story drift Delta shall not exceed delta sub a divided by rho for any story. Rho shall be determined in accordance with this section, like I talked about at the beginning of the video. Rho for us was given at 1.3. Delta sub a is our allowable drift limits set by the ASCE 7. So, okay, we need to do that extra step. Well, what's delta sub a? Well, well. We scroll down here, boom, we find ourselves in table 12, 12, 1. 
allowable story drift, delta sub A. This is dependent upon the type of structure that you have, as well as the risk category that you find yourself in. We're risk category two, that was given. And then you have a couple of different options here. The first one is long and wordy, but read it. It's, it's a really important one. Structures, other than masonry shear wall structures, okay, so far that's us, four stories or less above the base as divided in section 11.2 for here, us here today, four stories is what we have, so that's us as well. With interior walls, partitions, ceilings, and exterior wall systems that have been designed to accommodate the story drifts. That bit of info I didn't give here today, we are going to fall under the assumption that the designers did a good job and they detailed out everything accordingly to be able to move with the design displacement that we are designing for as engineers for the actual structure. So we're going to say that we do indeed fall into this first category. If you did not, or if you could not prove that, you would have to move down. Then you have masonry cantilever shear wall structures. That's not us. Other masonry shear wall structures. That's not us. They really, they really punch you in the gut if you're doing masonry structures here because they, uh, they notoriously aren't necessarily the most ductile or, or well-behaving systems um, when it comes to displacements. So they, they keep a close eye on the limitations of those types of structures. Or number four, all other structures. They say, hey, as long as you ain't doing any like crazy masonry stuff over there, well, screw it, it could be anything else. Uh, but for us here today, it's the check mark. It's number one. Risk category two. That finds us here. Always look at the footnotes. Is the story height below level X? I'll show you what that means in a moment here, but that's really straightforward. And then we also have footnote C. There shall be no drift limit for single story structures with interior. Well, doesn't matter. We're not a single story structure, so that doesn't matter to us. And then we have in the title footnote B, footnote A and B. A is that, we already know that. B, for seismic force resisting systems solely comprising of moment frames in seismic design category D, E, and F, the allowable story uh, drift shall comply with the requirements of 12, 12, 1, 1. Oh my gosh, it's circular. They're bringing us back up to say, hey, if you didn't initially start up here and read the freaking code like you were supposed to, well, we have a backup. You should be reading these footnotes if you just scan straight down to this table which will take you back up there to make sure that you are properly applying rho for your system. Delta sub A equals 0 0.025 times H sub SX. This is the height uh, of the story below level X. If you're looking for this delta A, HX is going to start, and I'll go red, from right here, from the story below, so this is the third story, up to the story that you're looking at. So delta sub A four is using the distance from the story below, so three, up to four. So H sub S X is this amount. So at the top here, it's 12 feet for our, the example. So this will be 12 feet. If you just leave it in 12 feet, that's fine, but then you're gonna get a result in feet. And so far, everything else that we've done is in inches, and that's really the units that you keep it in when you're analyzing this kind of stuff. So let's just convert it off the rip times 12 inches. And since we fall into that special uh, addition, we need to divide this whole thing by rho, which is 1.3 given in the problem statement. 2.77 inches is your allowable story drift limit. Notice this will be the same for every floor because they're all the same, except for the first floor. That one will need to swap in 16 feet times 12 inches divided by 1.3. So you'll see that summarized here above. And are we okay? Fourth floor, we are in drift limits. Third, we're in within drift limits. We're within drift limits. First floor, we are within drift limits. So this structure is compliant with the ASCE 7, at least from a uh, story drift perspective. And there you go, that's the end of today's example. Hey, before you go, if you're at the edge of your seat, just gripping your freaking auditorium chair uh, and you want more of that and you're not, go ahead and subscribe, it's totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Uh, and if you want to take it a step further, if you want to donate to the auditorium, uh, help us fix the popcorn machine or whatnot, go ahead and become a team member. All the contributions just go right back into the channel. So I appreciate everyone who has already done that. Uh, those of you out there are phenomenal. I really do appreciate it. And that's it. Catch me next time. See you, everybody.